Lights out. Hello. Do you hear that haunting strain? It's by Beethoven, Opus 70, number one. But it has another name, a strange name. Tonight we'll tell you that name and the even stranger story connected with the music. Lights out. on my account in such lovely music. Don't stop. Well, I can't think of a better reason for stopping. Believe me, you're perfectly welcome, but are you sure you're in the right place? I'm Mark Crane. Have we met? Uh, I have not had the pleasure. Well, I hope you'll forgive this intrusion. You see, I was passing when I heard the music, and I was drawn to it, so I took the liberty. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Gentlemen, a compliment. We've been playing together every Friday evening for five years, and this is the first time we've ever attracted an audience unsolicited. May I introduce the members of the ensemble? Miss... Marie Erdodi. Mr. Ben Miller, our cellist. How do you do? And Louis Brock, our pianist, who's also a very fine composer. Oh, you're a composer. Yes. But do you know this Beethoven trio? Are you familiar with it? I have not been able to forget it. It has stayed with me from the first moment I heard it, every part of it. Yes, I feel the same way about it. It has a haunting quality, a feeling of, of another world. Yes. But I really should not have come in this way without an invitation. Oh, nonsense. Please sit down, Miss Erdota. You're most welcome. It's very nice of you to ask me to stay, but I don't know if I should. Oh, why not? Please stay, Marie. I, I mean, Miss... Uh... You may call me Marie. Well, what happened to the music? Why did it stop? Louis, a friend of yours. Why didn't you tell me she was coming? <laughs> no, Liz. You see, Maria Miss Adoti, my wife, Elizabeth. Well, I'm delighted. And so are we. Miss Adoti was passing. The windows were open. The music was pouring out. She loves what? Beethoven, and so here she is. What could be more natural? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Of course not. Not at all. No. Do you live in this neighborhood? No, I live some distance from here. But where do you live? At the Hotel Vienna. Hotel Vienna? Yes, it's a very small place. I don't recall. I... Where is it? It is on the street near the park. Oh, the park? What park? Oh, Mark, what does it matter? Let me take your coat. Oh, no, thank you. Would I... you like some wine? Yes, good. Oh, good. Get Mark? it. Mark? Lewis? Ah. Yes, I'd like some wine. Yes. You're so very <clears throat> kind. You make me feel as if I belonged here. And this room, it reminds me. Uh, forgive me, you see, I'm a jeweler, and I couldn't help noticing your necklace. I... I can't remember when I've seen anything so exquisite. Is it an heirloom? Yes, it's been in my family for years. Oh, I see. But, you know, I think I must go... Oh, no, 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 please, please, no, please, please stay. We're going to finish the trio. Oh. Then I could not go. Even if I wanted to. John, you got it clean. I asked John to get things straight for your first visit. It's very simple, as you see, but uh, I have everything I need here. Almost. I've done some of my best work in this place. It's very nice, Louis, but uh, the furniture is so thin, it doesn't seem to have any substance. Oh. Oh, but yes, I see what you mean. It's, uh, well, it's the modern touch. I like a little of it in my work, too. It's a magnificent head, isn't it? 
I've had that bust of Beethoven since I was a student. It's been a sort of inspiration to me, you might say. Not very handsome, I'll admit, but they do say he was an ugly man. I do not think he was ugly. Oh, no, no, of course not, not inside. No one who wrote the kind of music Beethoven wrote could have been ugly inside. Come, Marie, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's such a, a fragile chair. It doesn't seem as if it would hold one. It's a throne, Marie. A throne? Yes, Marie, this chair, this room, everything you touch takes on grace. You know that little German restaurant that we were in tonight? Just an ordinary place, but your presence transformed it. Even the waiter was aware of it, Marie, the one you spoke to in German. Aware of what? Why, of you. I saw the way he looked at you, with reverence as if you were royalty. <laughs> royalty? But, Louis, I thought the people of your country were done with kings and queens. Don't laugh at me, Marie. I'm serious. I've never spoken to any woman like this before in all my life. I'm very flattered, of course, but I would rather you talked about your music. After all, that was why I came. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Something wonderful has happened, not only to me, but to my music. I want you to see something. I wrote this last night. It, it, it came to me all at once. I wrote it for you. Well, it's a very great compliment. But I'm afraid I'm not worthy of it. What? Not worthy of it? Oh, darling. Oh, Louis, please, you must not go on. You must not. Have I offended you, Marie? I'm not being disrespectful. I'm speaking from my heart. I love you, Marie. I want to marry you. Oh. No, it's impossible. You don't know what you're saying. I've never known anything more clearly. Well, you, you don't know anything about me. You don't know who I am or the kind of world I come from. I don't care. I don't have to know. <laughs> Perhaps I'm just a dream, Louis. And when you wake up tomorrow, I will be gone. You will remember me for a little. Just for a little. Don't make fun of me, Marie. You're the only reality that I've ever known. Oh, my poor Louis. It's wrong. I should not. Then you, you will give me some hope, at least. Oh, I don't know what you're asking. Or just how much you would be giving up. I know that I would give up my life for you. You would? Oh, here. They'll Thanks. be here soon. They're only ten minutes late. That roast is going to taste like a football, and I wanted everything to be just right for them. Mrs. Crane's matrimonial agency. <laughs> well, Marie is a lovely person. Yes. She's stunning looking, isn't she? Yes. I love the way she wears her hair. I must ask her tonight who does it for her. Well, Liz, that's hardly your style. It was a miracle, the way she walked in here. And the way Lewis responded to her. <laughs> he's always been so shy of women. And he needs a woman. He needs somebody to look after him. It's no wonder he's half sick all the time, the way he lives. The way he eats. If he eats. I'm afraid I can't see Marie in an apron puttering over a hot stove. As a matter of fact, Liz, I think you've been doing a little wishful thinking about those two. Why? Lewis has been seeing her practically every day. What does that mean? Marie's obviously a woman who's used to a lot of attention from men and likes it. She's also a woman of wealth. You know that necklace she was wearing, that filigree thing with diamonds? Yes. Well, I know what it is now. I've been doing a little research. It's an empire piece, early 1800s, and it's worth a small fortune. Really? Yes. Now, what can Lewis offer? He hasn't got a penny. Oh, I can't see that that's any obstacle. That's all to the good. Oh. She can be his patron as well as his wife. Oh, Liz, you dreamer. What time is it? It's a quarter after. Don't you think I'd better call her hotel? Oh, you might as well. It is getting on. I'm starved. What's the name of it, the hotel? The uh, Hotel Vienna. Oh, yes. Information? Will you give me the phone number of the Hotel Vienna, please? 
No, I don't know the street address. Just a minute, Mark, did she give you the street number? No, not that no, I can I don't recall. know the street number. What? Are you sure? That's strange. What? There is no Hotel Vienna. I feel so sorry for him. He's almost out of his mind. He's, he's tried every hotel in town. Well, maybe she's gone back to Austria. Oh, Lewis thought of that, too. He's tried the airport, the steamship line. Has he tried the police? You know, those jewels she was wearing were certainly tempting. <laughs> you know, I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. She's probably going to come with him tonight. Oh, if the sky was falling, Ben, you can be sure Elizabeth would make a happy occasion of it. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see, there's there the doorbell. You're always worried. Oh. How are you? Oh, hello, Lewis. Hello, Lewis. We're all ready. Haven't you heard from him? Oh, Lewis, I... I'd like your help. I've been trying to work out a passage here in the Schubert, but I'm stuck. Shall we try it? I'll show you what I mean. No. No, I want to play the Beethoven. Well, why not change the program? Oh, yes. No. I want to play the Beethoven. All right. Beethoven it is. Get you an aspirin. No. Mark, no, will you get, get the aspirin from the medicine no, cabinet? No. Come over and lie down on the sofa. No, no. I'm all right, Liz. Just let me sit here for a moment. What do you think, Liz? Shall I call Gottwald? No, I don't want the doctor. Lewis, here, take this. Lewis, you're behaving like a baby now. Take it. Come on, Lewis. There. All right? Yes, thanks. I think I'd better get along now. Well, you can't go. You're, you're not well. No, I'm fine, Miss. Oh, Lewis, you don't look fine. Now, why don't you spend the night here where we can take care of you? It's a good idea, Lewis. Why don't you? No, thank you. Thank you both very much. I appreciate it, but I'd really rather get home. I can rest better in my own place. Are you sure, Lewis? Perfectly sure. Now, I've got my car outside, Lewis. I can drop you off. Thanks, Ben. I'd rather walk. I'm sorry about interrupting your trio. Well, it's the first time it's happened in five years. All right, Lewis, don't worry about it. Anyway, you and Ben can always play duets. Marie! Oh, you come back. My dearest, I thought you'd left me. I shouldn't have come back, Louis. I tried not to, but I had to. I had to come back to say goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, no. No, we've only just met. We're just beginning. I wish it were beginning. What is it, Marie? What are you trying to tell me? Is there somebody else? No. No, nothing so simple as that. Oh, I wish I could make you understand without hurting you. My world is so different from yours, as different as night from day. You would not like it. You don't belong there yet. No. No. No, I'm not a drawing room fop, if that's what you mean. I'm not an aristocrat with a castle on the Rhine or a villa on the Riviera. I suppose that's the kind of life you're talking about. Oh, Louis, these things don't matter to me. Money, wealth, position, they are dust. Believe me, I know. Well, then what is it, Marie? What is it? I want to ask you a question. One question. 
Will you answer me honestly? Yes. Yes, of course. If you had to choose between me and your music, which would you choose? Oh, why? Why must I choose? This is a beginning, too, Marie. My music, since I've met you, has, has come alive. I'm just beginning to, to write. You have not answered my question. Stop. Stop talking in riddles, Marie. Stop torturing me. Why not? Why not? Is it because I'm a commoner and you're a countess? Does blood really matter to you? If it does, then recognize the real blood and not the pale stuff which is called royal. I have told you over and over again. That is not the reason. Oh, why don't you believe me? What am I to believe, Marie? You tell me that you love me and then you run like a frightened fawn whenever I approach you. I know that I'm not beautiful, but I am not an ogre. You are beautiful. Your music is beautiful. My music? So that is it. All this time it has only been my music that has ruffled your heart. Yes, it is your music, and your music is you. Are they separable? I gave my heart to you the first time I heard your music, and no one else has had it. If I could, if I were able, I would go with you now, wherever you desired, anywhere. If you could, if you were able, why can't you? You are free, you're alone, there is no one to prevent you. No one. But still, I cannot. Oh, I have not wanted to tell you because I, I don't want you to be sad. I am not one of your court gentlemen to be played with. Tell me what it is, Marie. Promise you will not weep, nor beat your breast, or curse heaven. Promise you will, you will be the same after I tell you. Anything, anything, only tell me, Marie. Yesterday, the court physicians attended me, all of them. You would have thought I was the queen. But Mama insisted, and they told her. But I already knew. What did they tell her? In heaven's name, what? That I have not many weeks left in my life. It, it cannot be. No, no, no. Remember, you promised. This, this will not be the end, Marie. Not for us. I will not allow it. This was only an interlude. I will follow you. I will find you. You will? Yes, Marie. I will. Here, Marie. This is for you, a trio I finished this morning. For me? How lovely. But I want to hear it. Now, I, I must hear it before. What do you call it? It has no name. Only Opus 70. Why don't you call it the Ghost Trio? He forgot me. And so will you. That is the way of love. In life and after, there is a brief togetherness and then the long loneliness. No. No, it's not like that, Marie. Not when you have it. Oh, it is illusion, Liebchen. Only the illusion of love. No. I must go back to my own country alone. Not alone. I'm going with you. No, I cannot let you. But I want to go, Marie. Do you realize that if you come with me, you cannot take the music you might have written? If 
I can't have you, there will be no music. I'm terribly worried about him. I should never have let him go. You couldn't have stopped him, Liz. You know how Lewis is when he makes up his mind to something. Why, wild horses can't stop him. After all, Liz, he's not a child. Oh, but he is a child. He doesn't even know when he's ill. I'm going to call him. You'd better wait till morning. It's late now. He's probably asleep. No, I'm going to call him. I'm too upset about it. Beethoven did dedicate his ghost trio to Marie Fornetode. Perhaps when the music is played, it still calls forth her spirit. <laughs> 